Um, <laughs> sometimes on networks, uh, you know, things will say things that they shouldn't have said. Um, this actually came from a request, uh, Mike Skripek. Did I say that right, Mike? Uh, he, he was talking to me on Monday, and I was completely not prepared for, the, for this talk because I was sort of hoping to get an idea from someone of what I was going to write. Um, and he brought up this idea of, like, I, I need to know when things talk to stuff they're not supposed to, which sort of implies, you know, you're like, here's the things you're allowed to talk to. Anything outside of that's not great. Um, and so it sounded kind of like when, you know, in the movie, when Hagrid goes, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so let's write a script called shouldn't have said that. Um, okay, so I brought up a script that is called shouldn't have said that dot Zeke. Um, so a lot of times, this is, this is how you always start problems. Like all the scripts that are in Zeke right now, like this is literally where they all started was me going, I don't like the way that logs. I don't like the way the notices work. I don't like something. Or I, I wish I had this new, I wish I had a log called shouldn't have said that dot log. Uh, and so you start, and immediately you're like, all right, well, let's just do um, module shouldn't have said that. Okay, now we have a module called shouldn't have said that. Can everyone see the screen? It looks big enough, I think. Um, let's just assume that we're going to have some export stuff that we want to expose outside of this. So a lot of times this is just a pretty normal structure. Um, okay, so we're not going to put anything in export quite yet. What we're really interested in, though, is like hosts connecting. So we're, you know, what, what do you do for that in, in Zeek? Well, there's, there's an event called uh, connection established. I bet you can guess what this event references, or you know, what the uh, semantics of this event are. It's, hey, there's a you know, connection established. I'm now tracking this, uh, this new connection. Similar to Hagrid telling Harry, or uh, it's telling the guy in the bar, I think. I was, I was watching this with my kids the other day. But um, uh, when he was uh, telling him about you know, Fluffy or whatever, and how to get Fluffy to go to sleep. <laughs> so anyway, connection established. That's like a good event to start with. So let's uh, just take a PCAP and just print uh, the connection ID and just see what comes out. Oops, did I save that? OK, save now. So now I've got this, and we'll do, oh wait. OK, I have this PCAP. It's actually from years and years ago. It's like Skype traffic. It's just some, some random thing. Um, OK, so we'll run that. And what happens? Yay, we have connections that were established. And, and it printed out uh, you know, the originating host, the originating port, the, the ephemeral port, the responder host, the responder port. Uh, <clears throat> it's primarily 443, but there's some other stuff scattered in there for some reason. Um, okay, so we have a start. That's not where we wanted to go, though. We still shouldn't have said that. Uh, all right, so first, we'll, the first thing we want to do is we have to establish that whitelist. We're like, we, we need to say, like, hey, host or subnet X is allowed to talk to, subnet, to subnets Y, Z, whatever. So that is something where... I would use the, um, the config framework, but unfortunately, it's, it's not expressive enough right now to do this, so it'd be a little more work to, to get something expressible through the uh, config framework. So we're just going to define like regular variables. Um, so let's, let's make a variable called allowed. And it has to be a table, because we're going to look up something in it. So we're going to look up a host in this table, and then we want to get back, like, here are the networks that host is allowed to talk to. But we're going to, instead of a host, we're going to say, like, you know, this subnet is allowed to talk to this subnet and this subnet and this subnet. So this is where it gets a little goofy, because we, we need to index into this table, but then we need it to return a set of subnets. So the, the, the way you express that is that way. And instead of doing, we'll make it uh, redef so that you could change it in a different script. That just allows you to, you know, without modifying this script, you would be able to add and remove things from it. Okay, so uh, the way that we would typically say this is uh, table, subnet, table subnet of set subnet. It's, it's pretty straightforward, but it has at least the right sound when you hear it. Um, okay, so let's pick out a host in there. Okay, well, it looks like all the originators are in this 192.168.3 slash 24. So let's go ahead and say that slash 24 is the one we're watching. So 
we're watching that slash 24, and now we have to say, what is that slash 24 allowed to talk to? Oops. That slash 24, let's say that slash 24 is allowed to talk to, um, Wait, let's, let's narrow this a bit more even. Let's, let's narrow it to, um, let's narrow it just to the single host. So because this is a subnet, we can define a slash 32, which is a subnet, but it's a single host. Like, it's, it's not going to match any other host. Okay, so now we've limited, shoot, I keep going the wrong way. Okay, now we've limited it to a single host in here. That's the only one we're tracking. We don't really care about the other host. Maybe, uh, that host is the CEO's desktop, and we know that you know he's always getting the same address. We just really want to be like, shouldn't be connecting to, to everything, or maybe even better, it's like the the treasurer's desktop, and like they, you probably don't want them like doing too much from that from that host. So you're like only talk to to these particular hosts. So let's see, that one is talking to one, two, three different hosts, but. Let's say, let's just pick on these, uh, these, these first two and say those two are allowed. So we'll define that those two are allowed to be talked to by this other host. But now, it's not gonna change. We're not doing any conditionals. So now we're like, okay, but I wanna change the behavior of what this script is doing. It was uh, just printing everything, but now I really only wanna print when it's not allowed, right? So the first thing we have to do is say if the originator, because the originator is the one that's like, that's the one we're really kind of watching. So if the originator host is, is in the allowed set, then we'll print. Okay, so what this will do, now that we're checking to see if the originator is in the allowed, this is limiting to say, print the connection ID every time um, it's one of the hosts that we're watching. We're not doing any further checking. Yet. Keep going the wrong way. We're not doing any further checking yet, but this should limit it only to that uh, 192, 168, 310 host. And it did. So now we've limited to there. But it's printing everything. And we said, hey, you're allowed to talk to these, to these two hosts. You can't talk to this last one at the bottom, but you can definitely talk to the other two. So now we need to change it and make it, sorry. Sorry if the, it's a little disorienting with the sliding. <laughs> um, Okay, so now we have to have another, oops, let's change that. We have to have another conditional now. So, sorry, put braces in real quick. Ugh. Okay, so now we're gonna do, uh, let's see, allowed, and we're going to get the, sub, the set of subnets that is, that is allowed to be watched. So, with that, what I just typed there is going to return a set of subnets. Well, fortunately in Zeek, because this is such a common thing to say, like, I have a bunch of subnets and I want to know if this IP address is in any of those subnets, the operators just kind of work correctly. You don't have to, like, iterate through and say, is it in this subnet? Is it in this subnet? Is it in this subnet? You can just say, is it in any of these subnets? So, um, but what we're actually watching for is that it's not in those, because we only want to print it if it's not allowed. So if it's not, and I am I'm sorry, I'm doing that backwards. Because uh, this side returns the set of subnets, so we have to say if the originator is not in the allowed set. So that's sort of the, the phrasing you might want to use to think about it. If the, oh, I'm sorry, and this is a responder. So we know the originator is in the allowed, uh, the, in the set of allowed things. We know now the responder is not allowed to, to be talked to. So now what this should do is only print if, um, again, this should only print if it's not allowed to be talked to. So now what, we, what we've done is taken this PCAP that has some number of packets, and I don't actually know how many there are, and we got this one single line out that, uh, uh, this one single line that is the, the thing that it wasn't allowed to do, and it could be potentially in lots and lots of things it's not allowed to do, but in this, in this situation, we have the one thing it's not allowed to do. But that's kind, kind of interesting, but this is not deployable. If you ran this um, on a real cluster, what would happen is you would end up with a lot of crap in the wrong place. 
Um, so the next thing we're going to do is immediately, and this is a very normal thing when you're writing this sort of stuff, is you're like, I should make a log. And of course, this is going to be called shouldn't have said that dot log. Um, so the first thing you have to do when you make a log is uh, it, this sort of, uh, it's, it's just sort of a formality that you have to do to have some identifier to reference the log by. So there's a thing called log ID, and you do the, there. And actually, what I'll do so it's a little clearer is fully uh, put that out. So this is, shouldn't have said that namespace in the uh, log enumerator in there, en enum value. So now we've got an enum value to reference this by. We have to, if you've looked at scripts before or written scripts yourself, you'll, be, you'll know that we have to create um, a, a record that explains um, what fields and types and, and everything are in this log. <clears throat> So immediately you have to jump in and you, you'll define your type and it's a, uh, we're gonna, we'll call it info, which is sort of the, the thing that gets used in a lot of uh, scripts, the log type ends up being called info. And they all work out because they're in different namespaces. <clears throat> so we'll add a, uh, we'll add a timestamp. It's frequently good to have timestamps in your logs so you know when things are written, like when was something said, right? And, you know, when should I, shouldn't have, shouldn't have said that or when did I say that thing I shouldn't have said? Um, and then you're going to have your Hagrid, because he's obviously the one that said something he shouldn't have said. So that's an address type. And you're going to have your Harry, because, well, actually, I guess he's the one, he wasn't the one that he said I, something to. What would that be? The, who was that? The guy, let's just yell it out. The, the, the mask man. Oh, yeah, okay, that's right, that's right, that's right. It was Voldemort. Okay, so you've got your Hagrid and you've got your Voldemort. Okay. And this is what's fun. When you create the log definition, you can call the field whatever you want. <laughs> you, you don't have to call it a ridge, rest, victim, attacker. You don't have to call it any of that. Haggard and Voldemort work fine. So now that we're down here, we don't want to print anymore. Printing, printing is yesterday. It's old news. Forget it. Move on. So now what we're going to do is, oh, sorry. Got ahead of myself. This is still weird for me. I do, I'm sorry, Zeke and it. So we have to uh, initialize this log stream. Like we've created the record, but we haven't set, we haven't like told Zeke yet. Like, hey, there's a log stream. Like we've said, there's a there's this log enumerator. There's uh, this record. Now we have to say tie that like the tie that uh, enumerator and together with that type and uh, and let's go ahead and, and do that. And there's plenty of examples of this in lots of scripts because it's really common to to go through all of this. So you have to give it the, the enum, and that's just like for a reference point everywhere to say, this is the one I'm referring to. So you, you give it log, and then you have to, well, you can create this anonymous record this way, but it just kind of go with me. We only have 30 minutes, so. <laughs> okay, so now what we've done is internally in the login framework in Zeek, we've said, hey, there's this enumerator that I'm gonna use later, the log, log um, that, I'm gonna use that later to reference this thing I'm telling you about now. And this thing I'm telling you about now is a, is a log I'd like you to create, and it has the, uh, the name, uh, or sorry, it has the, the type of, of info. Like those are the columns you expect, that I expect you to receive from me when I'm sending log messages. And there's, there's actually another one. We can add path. Oops. We can define, a, it'll auto create a log name, um, and in this case it'll work correctly, but uh, what we can do is give it one ourselves. Let's see. Uh, shouldn't have said that. Okay, now I'm wondering, should I call it shust? No, we'll, we'll, we'll call it, we'll call it fully. Shouldn't have said that. So what it, you'll get, shouldn't have said that that log. Okay. Shust seems not great. Um, Okay, so now we actually have to write to the log. We, we've sort of set the stage for ourselves to write something into the log, so let's go ahead and do that. And it's pretty straightforward, log write, right? Um, but like I said earlier, we're, gonna, we're telling the logging framework, hey, here's this, uh, this, this identifier I'm gonna give you to let you know that I'm referring to that thing I told you about earlier. So we give it the, um, the enum value. And we will do, uh, there's a thing called a, a record type constructor that you can do. So we're making a record. This, this, this syntax of doing info this way 
is saying, look, we're making an instance of this record, but now we have to make sure we fill out these fields because if we don't fill them out, they're not marked as optional or anything, so we have to fill them out. So we need to fill out timestamp. Um, Zeke's, Zeke's notion of time is driven by the, the packet timestamps that are coming in. So as packets come in and like libpcap perhaps has attached timestamps to them, that's Zeke's notion of like what now is. It's not constantly going to the operating system going, what time is it, what time is it, what time is it, what time it is. It, like it's just as packets come in, it goes, okay, I know what time it is because I know what time is on the packets. And that's what network time represents. It's really inexpensive to do that call. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but now we have our Hagrid. It's the first time, it's, it's funny actually, having written like thousands and thousands of lines of Zeke scripts, writing along with names like Hagrid and Voldemort as field names, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, so uh, who, is the, who is the Hagrid? He is C dollar, ID dollar, Ridge H, oops. Okay, so we have our Hagrid, he's assigned. Now we need to sign our Voldemort. Our Voldemort, in this case, is going to be, oops, a responder. So it's the, the listener, right? I, I, I wish I'd thought about this more. I wanna, I'd kinda like to fit Harry in here somewhere where he's like the one that was told, that the thing was told. Oh wait, Mike, I know, I know what to do. Harry is, we're just gonna say Mike. Okay, this is gonna be a string. Okay, so there, now, uh, you're the one that gets told everything. Oh wait, you know what we could do, actually? <laughs> it's getting stupid, but what the heck. Um, uh, we'll make a variable, uh, an option named Harry, you can change it at runtime. We'll set it to Mike by default. But, um, so we'll, we'll set that so you yourself can set your own name there because this is the one being told that the thing shouldn't have been told. So, okay, there you go. We'll set that. We've made this more abstract. Why would we, why would we do that? Okay, there we go. Harry. Now we have, and I need to put a semicolon. I think that'll work. This is gonna be actually a low, oh, oh, I see a bug. Comma. Okay. All right, so if this works, it'll print nothing out. Hopefully that's what happens. And then we'll take a look at our log. Yay. All right, so we ha should have, shouldn't have said that dot log. And we print it out and we have Hagrid, Voldemort, Harry. Now this is where things get really neat because I know a number of you um, write JSON logs or you write like the sort of Zeke, traditional Zeke logs, the tab separated ones, or you, use um, the, the plugin from Apache Metron to write to Kafka or perhaps other places. Um, the way the logging framework works, if you sort of fit your problem or your, your solution, I guess, into the logging framework like this, it just goes those places. Like, you don't have to do anything else. At this point, your, you know, whatever existing log shipping infrastructure you put in, it'll just go there and you're done. Um, so this is where, this is where maybe you're like, yay, I spent you know, half an hour on this thing, maybe an hour, maybe even the full morning, the entire morning. <laughs> and now you've got this log and then you put it in production and it's hitting a lot of stuff. And you go, oh, it's really annoying. And um, that's where the fun begins because suddenly then you get to find out over the next few weeks how the real world is not the way you thought it was. And, um, uh, this, this has happened over and over with many of the scripts that are in Zeek right now where they, you know, you write it and um, uh, they, the real world just always is a surprise. There's like, oh, packet loss will mess things up. Granted, this is an extremely, extremely simple script. There's already a couple problems I know with it just off the top of my head that could potentially impact things. But, uh, and, and edge cases where it's not gonna quite work right. But this is also like, as an incident responder, you look at this log and your first thought is, great, nailed it. I found out, you know, who's Hagrid in the discussion, who's Voldemort, you know, and, and Harry's just throw something in. But the next, you're immediately gonna have questions because you look at it, what's, what's okay, here's, I'll put this out. What's wrong with this log? Massively wrong. 
would not be acceptable to anyone. Context, there's nothing. This is like two IP addresses. What is it? Like, I, I know that these two IP addresses talk to each other. If that's exactly your problem and you never have to dig into anything, that's fine. But you always have to dig into things because inevitably, the moment that this hits, you're gonna put it in production, something will hit, and then you go, ah, oh, shoot. And this is basically like what we've been going through for years, writing the, the scripts that are in Zeek, is you know, there's always like, um, uh, in, in two, two, six, three, I think, we redid like the DHCP analyzer because over time, it, we had used it and other people had used it, and the, the log that it was outputting was helpful, like this could be helpful, but it's not, like you just discover over time, it's like, oh, but it could be more helpful, it could be better, it could give me more context around what I'm doing. So we can even go back and, um, and like just extend that a little bit and say, okay, well, this, that's fair, maybe, maybe we should actually say like, what, uh, <laughs> so we're gonna go with some alliteration. We're gonna have Voldemort port. <laughs> So Voldemort port, we're gonna, we're gonna give it a port and say log. So this is, you know, what, what port was, uh, was Voldemort listening on? Oh, sorry. I added the log, but didn't, I need to fill it out as well. Voldemort port. <laughs> oh, sorry. Voldemort, there we go. <laughs> Voldemort, that's way better. <laughs> Voldemort, Voldemort, there we go. Okay, respond port. Okay, let's see what happens now. I think that'll work. <laughs> All right, so we've got, <clears throat> sorry, we've got a little more information now. We know, we know that, uh, that Hagrid told Voldemort something on, on port 80. We don't know what. Maybe, maybe the what doesn't even matter, just the fact that, because, I mean, sort of, the fact that, the fact that Hagrid was talking to Voldemort in the first place, maybe for your use case or, or whatever this is, that's enough. You're done. You're like, nope, unplug that computer. It, it should not have done that. The fact that it did that, I don't even need to know anything else. So there, there's like this continuum, and I think that that's why in the package repository, there's so many packages. There's sort of like infinite variety of this script. You know, this is just one tiny example of, of like something someone might need or find utility in and there's infinite variations of that, um, which is a lot of fun, actually, because it means that essentially there's never going to be an end to like doing these things because there's some utility that someone will find. I mean, uh, uh, Robin, yesterday, during the, um, the sort of look back and look forward with Zeek 3.0 and, and future and forward, um, he talked about, for instance, uh, the, the integration that we're doing right now with OS Query. So it's, it's, it's end host data getting integrated into Zeek. What if you had, like, I don't know, who all is logged into uh, this, this, the analogy is sort of disappearing, but the, the Hagrid in the discussion, um, wouldn't it be interesting to know who's logged in there, what processes are running on that host, do it in real time so that you don't have to do any retrospective look up, look up or anything. It's built into your infrastructure and at the end of the day, your log just goes out and has the data there already. Um, that starts to get really fascinating, but it does. It creates this like endless variety of, of these scripts that could possibly exist and it's really exciting. So I would definitely prompt anyone to publish scripts like this. I mean, like even, uh, these, name it Hagrid and Voldemort. Have fun with it, who cares? From an instant responder perspective, everyone's gonna wanna, you know, fit it into like this, whatever, the Splunk model or the Elastic model. Like everyone's gonna wanna fit it in there. Make them do the work. <laughs> Make them convert uh, Hagrid to source host or whatever they, whatever those things call it, but make, make them do their work. <laughs> um, so anyway, are there questions or other directions people want to push the, oops, want to push the script or anything? Um, I, I only have one trick and this is it. It's live Zeek scripting. That's about the only thing I've got. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good question, actually. So the question was, is the first if statement needed? Yes. Uh, and I'll show you why it's needed. I 
Ah, that's a good question. I don't know. Let, let's find out. We'll cut it out. So the, that might be a valid point that that first if statement may not be necessary. Whoops. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. There's no index. We could fix that to avoid needing that. We could do something sort of silly like, uh, uh, geez, I don't even know if this will work. I, this, I always have to test this stuff to find out. Oh, so what I did was I set a default value, which I, I know someone's going to talk to me about this later that I'm doing that wrong, but, <laughs> or, or I did it right. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so we could do things like that, where when it goes to index in and it goes, oh, there's no value, I'll just return an empty set. Or, or you know, we could actually make it return, you know, like anything else that, we, that we're not tracking, you know, it's, it's, allowed to, uh, it's allowed to talk to this one host or, or two hosts or something like that. So we could actually use that to, to create larger structures. Um, that was a good question, though. Uh, are there any other thoughts? Yeah. Um, oh, so you're saying like if you have like a really tremendously large list. Yeah. Um, or they're not even a tremendously large, you have like 5,000 hosts. Can you guys get the, like, yeah. can I read that in uh, the script? Uh, yes, you can. Um, you could actually, okay, that's good. All right. Let's do option, um, Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So we'll we'll do what we'll do is a, we'll do another op, we'll do another option, and it'll be a set of uh, subnets, and we'll set the def let me move that up actually. We'll um, so we'll do that. We'll make it an empty set by default. We'll make. Uh, yeah, you could certainly make changes. That's a little more than I probably have time for. But uh, yeah, you, that's, that, this is why there's infinite variability on this stuff, because everyone for their use case is going to be like, you can talk to anything, but you cannot send more than 600 bytes. If you send more than 600 bytes, that's not OK. And so yes, that, all of that stuff would be, would be possible for sure. But I just unfortunately don't have time right now. Um, OK, so what we're going to do is, we have like a default set of things that we're like, everything can talk to these 5,000 hosts or something. So talk to, that's what we called it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, this is gonna be similar to the script I did on Monday. For anybody who was there and I did the config framework thing, let's do it again. I, I can vaguely remember how to do that. Uh, config, nope, config, I made that mistake Monday too. Config files. We're going to do uh, uh, voldafig. I don't think that works right. But we're going to go with voldafig. Um, OK, so we have voldafig.txt. So I'm going to have to make a file and talk to, OK. Let's see. I'm going to have voldafig.txt. All right. Oh, wait, I don't know what host to put in it now. What do I have? I, I don't, sorry, I'm, I don't use Emacs. I, I tried long ago, it just didn't work with me. Uh, talk to, oh wait, this was, should, shouldn't have said, maybe that was a bad name. Talk to, there we go. Okay, so, so this is the config framework. So what we did is we're gonna move these hosts, and then you can define a big, long list of things. Um, so I shouldn't have said that talk to, right? Now we're setting that to that. Uh, oops, wait. I think I'm using VI. No, okay. Um, and that, that, talk to, it sounds out by default. Okay, so what we're actually gonna do is cut that out. Because now anything is going to say it's allowed to talk to stuff in that by default. And, no idea if this will work, just like Monday. 
Oh wait, actually, let's make sure we remove logs, because a lot of times if you run it, but you've now made it so it won't write out a log, you end up looking at an old log and it's confusing. Oh, that, it was that, it was that if statement. <laughs> okay, now let's see if we've got a log. Aha. Okay, so, now this is where stuff gets tricky. <laughs> What's likely happening is the config framework is asynchronous, so it doesn't wait for everything to start up before it's read it, it's because normally uh, Zeek is meant for like live traffic analysis, and uh, it, it hasn't read the configuration yet by the time the packets are going, so it's, it, we kind of run into the situation. In live traffic, it might work fine. And that is assuming, did I get Voldafig? Yeah. Yes, oh my gosh, thank you. This is, this is like, uh, for anyone that was here Monday, it was a phenomenal experience for me. 70 people correcting me, it was perfect because I made a bunch of mistakes and like I, it was awesome. Anyway, what I, I see? <laughs> thank you. Anyway, so uh, yes, it did. It worked exactly the way we wanted it to. So we, what we could actually do, yay, it, it did work. So let's go ahead and say it can also talk to like, you know, let's cut out like this one too, just to like show that it is actually working. We're gonna add that host slash 32 to Voldafig. Run it again. There. And now those first two talking to 72, 14, 247, 19 should be gone, and they are. So yeah, I'll, I'll put this up somewhere. So anyway, I think that's about time, and I think there's uh, snacks and stuff, so thank you very much for listening and watching.